Welcome back to theyoungministry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Rumble and YouTube. Today we continue in Mark chapter 1, we're in verses 19 and 20, which reads, When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. That's Mark chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. Today we come to the call of the sons of Zebedee, brothers James and John, whose call was much like the call of brothers Simon Peter and Andrew. In each case, the Lord Jesus walks along the Sea of Galilee and invites them to follow him. The difference for James and John is that they left their father and their family's hired servants. For James and John, the call of the Lord Jesus took precedence over both family and wealth. Following the Lord Jesus Christ not only means submitting to his vision for our lives, it also means allowing him to correct our vision as we walk with him. The Lord Jesus will overturn our preconceptions of what he is all about and open our eyes to see life as he defines it. The Lord Jesus tells us to follow him in order to give us his vision for our lives. He took fishermen and turned them into fishermen of a different kind. Like them, this call from the Lord Jesus connects with our experiences, makeup, and resonates with our natural passions. In order for this to happen, we must first present ourselves to him daily. This means we must make it our habit to listen to him while reading his word and as we live our everyday lives. If we spend time with him, he will share his passion with us. After a while of this, we will begin to recognize his impact on our lives and we will care about what he cares about. In addition, we must be diligent to watch for opportunities with people whom he brings into our daily lives. Learning to be sensitive and attentive to coincidences that have his fingerprints all over them is a must for the disciple in the making. As a result of sticking close to the Lord Jesus, he'll put the right things on our hearts and get us moving in the right direction at the right time. He will shape us for his call on our lives. He is our shepherd who will lead us in the way of our everyday lives with him. In Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, the Lord Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. If we didn't have the other Gospels, we would think that the Lord Jesus was just walking by the Sea of Galilee and happens to come across some men fishing. He calls out to these men to follow him and they walk away from their livelihood in order to follow him. But when we compare the other Gospels to Mark's, we learn that this wasn't Peter's first encounter with Jesus. In John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42, we discover that Peter and Andrew had already met the Lord Jesus. They had profited from the ministry of John the Baptist, and they had accompanied the Lord Jesus at a wedding in Cana. In John chapter 1, the calling of the disciples was a call to believe in Christ for salvation the initial forgiveness of sins. A year later, here in Mark chapter 1, we see that this is a different call. This is the call of the Lord Jesus to these men to become his disciples, to follow him as his disciples. Discipleship happens in our lives after we have been forgiven of our sins and we have entered into a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Discipleship is another word for sanctification. Discipleship happens after justification and within sanctification. Lacking the understanding that a year goes by from John 1 to Mark 1 has caused many 
to not understand the difference between forgiveness of sin and the process whereby we learn that his way in this life is better than ours. This lack of understanding has cost most of the heresy that has been born in the church since the time of Christ. Discipleship or sanctification is a process whereby we are getting to know the Lord for ourselves and he is changing our souls which is made up of our minds, our wills, and our emotions. And our souls and our spirit are not one in the same. After we come into a relationship with God by believing that the Lord Jesus is our Savior and that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, we enter into this process whereby God begins altering our identity through the changing of our souls. So the Bible presents the theology of sanctifying grace. That although the power of sin has been broken in our lives and the penalty of sin has been matched and met, the presence of sin still remains and is being progressively dealt with by the Lord. This happens because even though God loves us just as we are, He is not willing to let us remain as we are. He loves us too much to let us stay the way we are. God is not satisfied for you and me to live in the actual condition of our sin, even though our legal standing before him has changed through our relationship with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. One thing God uses in addition to his word to change us is conviction which is not the same as judgment. Conviction is God wrapping his arms around us and drawing us nearer to himself. He uses his word to move us along, to set goals of grace for us, to remind us of what we should love and what we should hate and what we should desire and how we should live and how we should speak. The ultimate goal of our sanctification is not what most people believe it is. Most people believe it's about us getting better. No. Sanctification is the influence of God on our lives so that others benefit from what God is doing in us. This is what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.